I showed up at work one day and the supervisor said, oh, let me give you a hand getting to your position. And we blew right by my position into the Flames administration offices. And I was thinking, oh boy, what have I done? <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> But what it in fact was, was we came around the corner and there was the great Ken King, uh, may he rest in peace, oh. sitting in a power chair that the organization had decided to rent on my behalf. Hey fellow workers, my name is Kim Seaver. Welcome back to the Alberta Worker Podcast. You are tuning in to episode three on season three. We are a proud member of the Labour Radio Network as well as the Harbinger Media Network and broadcasting from the territory of the Nisitabi. Today's guest is Dan Peterson, disability advocate, award-nominated events worker, karaoke enthusiast, and accessibility nerd. Welcome, Dan. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. You betcha. Looking forward to this interview. Basically, we're going to turn the time over to you to just tell us your life story, where you grew up, what your family life was like, where you went to school, you know, that sort of thing. And then, of course, sharing with us your personal labor history, your first job, subsequent jobs, what you're up to now, and just the labor journey you took to get to that point. You can do those separately or you can intertwine them as you go along. The floor is yours. Excellent. So much like yourself, Kim, I am from Regina originally. That's cool. The east end of Regina in a uh, neighborhood called Glen Elm, uh, sort of the Victoria Park area, Glen Karen area. Yeah, I was over in that area as well. Oh, wow. When did you live there? We left in 2001. Yeah, see, I left in 89. We moved to BC in 89. The schools have changed names now, but I used to live close to Arcola and Ring Road. Yeah, yeah. Do you know where Greer Court is? I do, yes. Yeah, so I lived in government housing in Greer Court for a couple of years. Grade four, grade five. That's awesome. I don't know whether you know where uh, Rupert Street would have been, just off Victoria Avenue. I'm not sure. Like I said, I was like nine or 10 back then. Yeah, that was, that was a while ago. Not only that, but I didn't have a lot of freedom to roam very far when I was nine and 10. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of where it all started. I grew up with one sibling and my parents actually, for the bulk of their careers, uh, worked for Sears. They actually met working at Sears. My dad had kind of uh, worked his way up through uh, the ranks actually with no college degree and yet wound up in a transportation and logistics management role. So we were doing quite well. Oh, wow. Uh, I describe us as a Sears family because my sister, who's three years older than I am, one of her first jobs was working in their call center when the Sears call center was still a thing. Okay. Yeah, I spent a lot of times at Sears downtown Regina. Yes. Yeah. So in, in August of 2001, we relocated to Calgary with Sears. Actually, they moved our family here. My dad took a, a warehouse management job when they built their new distribution center here in Calgary. My sister was in, in university at the time in education, and so she followed a year or two later, but we're all back here now and living life. And uh, I, in terms of a labor history myself, when my dad did retire, we talk about being karaoke enthusiasts. In addition to working for Sears, my dad was a prominent uh, DJ in the province of Saskatchewan for weddings and events, Christmas parties, the, the whole nine. We ran our own company there. Oh, wow. We uh, decided once he retired that we were going to give karaoke uh, a go here. We ran our own company here for a little while. And even though he's, you know, could be retirement age, is still entertaining people on a weekly basis as a karaoke host for a different company now. We did that for a while. I, in addition to doing sort of back end, updating the karaoke books, song selections, and putting tracks in, we ran a, uh, a karaoke contest one time at the old Shamrock Hotel in Calgary, which is no longer around, sadly. It was an iconic old hotel that unfortunately the city had to tear down but okay family background in entertainment for sure and then i being a sports enthusiast in 2006 i had a friend that was just looking for a part-time job and we were hanging out anyway so i said well if you're going down to a job fair with the flames and at the saddle dome i'll go down and you know take my chances there and i have been part of the calgary sports and entertainment corporation ushering and fan experience team since september of 2006 Oh, wow. 
extremely uh, passionate about the organization and the team and all of the teams, obviously, but I have been there, like I said, since 06. And in my almost 18 year history there, I'm one of only six people in that time to navigate that position while using a wheelchair. Oh. And so I've kind of become their accessibility guy kind of by default. Yeah. In some ways, I sort of forced it on them because I'm not shy about giving my opinions on things. Sure. And then I... Just a quick question. Uh, you said Usher and what else? They've morphed it into what they're calling the fan experience department. So. Oh, fan experience. Okay. Anything uh, kind of front-facing, customer service, guest relations kind of a role. Right. I also, within the framework of that job, I say I'm an award-nominated event worker. I'm a six-time Calgary Tourism White Hat Award nominee. Wow. In the category of exceptional service in an attraction. We actually just had the award ceremony two nights ago this year. I did not win again, but I was a finalist for the award in 2018 or 2019. The years kind of blur together. Yeah, That put me in the top three in a category where somewhere in and around 80 people had interviewed. So that was oh my goodness, kind of a, kind of a surprise. That's awesome. Yeah. And then in the last four years, in addition to keeping with that job and recognizing that I had a voice in the disability community and was gaining such through that role. I didn't know what it was going to look like. I was kind of thinking maybe motivational speaking, that kind of thing. But I took on a volunteer role with the Alberta Ability Network, which was then the Calgary Ability Network, which is the advocacy and government relations arm of the Cerebral Palsy Association. Oh, okay. And I currently, through that kind of work am sitting on five different committees i sit on the alberta ability networks transportation and human rights tables currently i'm co-chairing an initiative we have going on called the barrier free alberta initiative which is lobbying the government to put accessibility legislation in provincially because alberta is one of only two provinces to do so and it's absolutely necessary. And then I also am a liaison for Alberta Ability Network with the Fair Calgary Community Voices Committee, which is a group that looks at the vulnerable sector as a whole and ec economics. And we do a lot of work around the very timely low-income bus passes, sort of where my role is there. Okay, cool. So that's sort of the labor history. Nice. And so was your first job working for your parents? I kind of started at the Saddle Dome in and around the same time. I finished high school and then had intended on taking a year off and determining what I was going to do. And then I just sort of fell into this and I thoroughly enjoy it. There's, there's not many better gigs around than getting paid to go to hockey games and concerts. <laughs> yes, no doubt. So you never worked at Sears like the rest of your family? No, no, I never did. <laughs> it's probably a good thing because then they closed down and you lost your pension. Thankfully, my dad got out about a year and a half before all of that happened. So his, oh, wow. his pension was saved. Nice. And your mom, was she still working there when they shut down? She actually spent, after leaving Sears, she stayed home to kind of be with uh, us as kids. And, oh, okay. And me living with a disability. And then when I got a little older, she went back and spent the bulk of time here in Calgary. She worked for Sears for a little bit. And then she just worked at uh, our local co-op. Okay for 15 years and retired from there as well. So. Cool. And do you attend all the concerts or just depends on what your shifts are? I try to work as much as I can. Okay. It is a department of close to 300 now. So trying to manage everybody's shifts and make sure everything's balanced out. Sometimes you miss out on the odd thing here or there, but I also enjoy attending events as well. So sure. It's, it's a nice balance. Do you sometimes have to cover like concerts or whatever of artists that you're not really keen on? Oh, all the time. <laughs> That's what makes the customer interaction a bit more fun because you get a chance to deal with their fans and maybe, you know, hear experiences as to why they're fans and what, and maybe, you you know, sometimes I've, I've learned to appreciate different artists that I would not normally have, have grown to enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes there are artists you've never been exposed to yet and then be able to go to the show, especially like opening acts and stuff. Oh yeah. Giving an opportunity to see stuff like that. Absolutely. All right. So yeah, so we're where you're at now. And so 
One thing I usually ask my guests is how has your intersections of marginalization ever influenced your experience as a worker? And that could be, you know, everything from ethnicity to gender, orientation, ability, religion, economic class, whatever it happens to be. You know, how has those intersections of marginalizations influenced how you've experienced you know, the workplace and being a worker? Obviously, there's positives and, and negatives. The Saddle Dome's a really old building, unfortunately. It was built in the 80s, and accessibility was sort of not even a thought right. back then, unfortunately. So yeah. even though I've been working for the organization for nearly 18 years, there are sadly still places in the building where I can't physically get to. Okay. You know, there, there's been hesitancy to, on both ends, on my end and the organization's end, to kind of move me up into a supervisor role because there's certain things that are required for that type of role that are not logistically possible right. given the constraints of the building. It's one of the reasons I actually took a recent vacation. When I talk about being an accessibility nerd, we're building a new event center here in Calgary for the Flames to play out of and replace the old Saddle Dome back in April I followed the team down to California with a friend of mine. We actually drove the whole stretch and caught games in four different arenas. Okay. And the entire time, yes, I was there watching the game because I'm a hockey fan and that's my team. They pay the bills. But I was also looking at, you know, how things are handled in different buildings from a working perspective and from an accessibility, you know, standpoint. Right kind of getting ideas that I plan on sharing with our brass. And I don't know, I find it funny that I've wound up in two industries being the sports and entertainment fields that are, are sadly not super accessible, but I am extremely passionate about both. On the karaoke end, I'm a competitive karaoke singer. Oh. That is a thing. We're currently mid-season in the karaoke world championships. Really? I've advanced to our regional, uh, they call them venue finals here in Calgary. But one of the things that I notice working in that field and, you know, trying to make my way as a musician of sorts is a lot of stages are not uh, built for wheelchairs and, yeah. you know, people with mobility issues. And that's another thing I'd like to change at some point. And, well, the sports industry is infinitely better than it once was, and I in traveling to other cities to watch games, I see all sorts of disabled workers, uh, which really does my heart well. And we at Calgary Sports and Entertainment Corporation have, I think they've partnered with Inclusion Alberta and have brought a number of people on board. Oh, cool. Well, it is better than it, it once was. Looking at it from a client and in large scale venues like this, a lot of times things like VIP packages, you can't get them with accessible seating because the VIP packages are set by price point and are typically for people that have floor seating and if the floor seating is not accessible then it's kind of a mixed bag it's one or the other and then there's just all sorts of changes i see coming as a lot of folks are headed in the right direction but i want to be part of that change rather than complaining about it yeah absolutely what about you know in the workplace customers or fans i guess coworkers, bosses and that sort of thing how have their interactions with you been overall Overall, great, actually. One of the reasons I got into the advocacy space is because my workplace experiences at the Dome have shown me that I, I actually have a voice and that people do value my opinions. And that was sort of the reason for the change. Back in 2013, I actually had a power wheelchair break down on me while on my way out of the building. Not only were they able to get me outside and to my ride safely, this was when we were hosting the World Junior Hockey Championships at the Saddle Dome. Oh. And I was struggling to navigate the building in my manual wheelchair because it is a large facility. I showed up at work one day and the supervisor said, oh, let me give you a hand getting to your position. And we blew right by my position into the Flames administration offices. And I was thinking, oh boy, what have I done? <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> but what it in fact was, was we came around the corner and there was the great Ken King uh, may he rest in peace, oh. sitting in a power chair that the organization had decided to rent on my behalf oh. while I was waiting on the government funding for a new one for myself. And so that I could continue to work safely and efficiently. I worked with and for a lot of tremendous people. My coworkers, for the most part, have been great. One of the challenges I do have regularly is as part of our uniform, we have to wear white dress shirts and ties. 
Okay. And I have the dexterity issue, so doing a top button to right. I is often an issue. And there's literally a group of guys in our locker room that sort of jump in and take care of things. That's awesome. My friend Lee likes to call it because I have a, a rather large neck. He says, I, I always feel like I'm strangling you. <laughs> He'll often joke that it's somebody else's turn to strangle them. But uh, yeah, just a tremendous organization to work for, which is why I've made a point of sticking around. Sure. The fans are pretty cool with everything. I mean, you have the odd interaction where people are rude, but yeah, when you factor in music and alcohol, things happen. That's true. People tend to lose their minds a little bit, but... For the most part, everybody's been absolutely tremendous. There's often times where if I'm not in the position that I'm normally in, or if I take a night off and go to a game instead of working, one of the most commonly asked questions to our folks who run our concierge desk is, where is Dan and is Dan okay? And when will Dan be back? Cool. They miss you and they want to make sure that your well-being is okay. That's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's cool. Awesome. Oh, one question I had. You mentioned that your sister worked for Sears for a bit and then went, went to school. So what is she up to now? She actually works in HR for a, a large food company. She got a degree in education and taught for a year or two and then realized, yeah, maybe this is not the direction <laughs> I want to head. Okay. And so that pivoted into HR. Okay. She's still in Calgary? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, any final thoughts for our listeners? I, I will leave your listeners with one of my favorite quotes of all time. It's an anonymous quote. I don't know who came up with it, but I love the phrase. I'd rather live a life of oh wells than a life of what ifs. If you want something, go get it. I mean, you're never going to get the thing if you don't try for it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. All right. And if people are interested in, you know, keeping up on some of the work you do, is there anywhere people can go to follow you? Social media or, uh, you know, a newsletter or website or anything? Certainly. You can find me personally on Twitter and Instagram at uh, wheels underscore, wheels with a Z because, well, why not? Uh, underscore 33. And you can find me on TikTok at the Rolling Bard, which is a blog that I'm going to be hopefully launching here soon. I intended on doing it last year and then kind of hit a snag. And uh, you can check out some of the work that we're doing with the Barrier Free Initiative at barrierfreeab.ca or barrierfreeab on Instagram and Facebook. Please like and support that initiative. It affects the nearly 20% of Albertans that are above the age of 15 and identify as having a disability. Other than that, that's pretty much all I got. Cool. No problem. And I'll put all those into the show notes too. So if people are following their podcast app or their YouTube channel, they'll be able to just click on them and be able to get to those things. So that's awesome. And if people are interested in following the Alberta Worker, you can find us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also visit us at our website, albertaworker.ca. And while you're there, why not sign up for our email newsletter? We have a daily, weekly, and monthly option. If you like this podcast episode, please rate and review us. Please also, if you're interested in supporting the Alberta Worker, visit albertaworker.ca slash support. Alberta Worker relies entirely on the financial contributions of listeners like you. If you're interested in being a guest on the Alberta Worker, podcast, just email podcast at albertaworker.ca or send us a DM on our social media accounts. Thanks so much, Dan, for joining us. And thanks to all the listeners for listening in. And as always, solidarity.